Which of the Dark Lord's evil plans were secretly hidden in the bedroom of young Tom Riddle? How was time travel foreshadowed way before Hermione got her time turner? And which detail will make you believe that Severus Snape was a Gryffindor at heart? Hi, I'm Dylan. Here are the most surprising and essential Harry Potter details that you might not have noticed the first time around. Harry's scar could see right through. In the Sorcerer's Stone, the young wizard first learns that his scar burns as a warning sign when he's threatened by some evil forces. And when he catches Professor Snape looking at him at the same time his scar hurts, he naturally draws the conclusion that Snape is his enemy. However, he doesn't pay attention to who Snape is talking to at the moment, as Professor Quirrell has his back to him. And it's only later in the movie that we all find out that Voldemort is actually a part of the back of Quirrell's head. So when Harry's scar was burning, he was actually looking at the Dark Lord's face, hidden under the turban. No one could have guessed it, but upon re-watching the movie, it's really exciting to see such a neat clue. And our next detail is also hard to catch, because the muggles just can't see it. The Leaky Cauldron's Disappearing Sign The popular wizarding pub doesn't seem to be too hidden away from the common Londoners, right? But its sign is bewitched. Next time you watch the movie, look closely at how it reveals itself when Harry and Hagrid are approaching the pub. Such a subtle trick to ward off the muggles. And while this detail is a nice magical touch to the wonderful world we are entering together with Harry, the next one hints at future events. Pay attention to colors and outfits. Even before young Harry learns about the existence of Hogwarts and the entire wizarding world, he sees, and so do we, at least one hint about it. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, when Harry goes to the zoo on Dudley's birthday, there's a group of students there. And look at their uniforms. The color definitely reminds us of Slytherin House, and even their badges look like those of the Hogwarts students. And seeing them near the Reptile House also looks like a nod to the Slytherins, whose symbol is a snake. Harry is a natural-born seeker. When Harry expresses anxiety over being a good Quidditch player, Hermione takes him to the trophy case. She shows him his father's name on an old trophy and tells Harry that being a seeker is in his blood. But we can actually see it with our own eyes even before we learn that James Potter was a seeker in his Hogwarts years. And that was in the scene where Oliver Wood introduces the Quidditch game to Harry. Look closely. When the snitch darts off into the sky, Oliver almost immediately loses his visual of it, but not Harry. He keeps his eyes on the glimmering golden orb, highlighting his undeniable talent as a seeker. That's pretty amazing, don't you think? Gilderoy Lockhart's Vanity From our very first glimpse of him, it's hard not to notice how narcissistic this new Hogwarts teacher is. But one scene from the Chamber of Secrets reveals one more, and quite unexpected, side of his character. Just check this out! In the scene where Ron and Harry try to convince Lockhart to save Ginny Weasley, we can clearly see a wig on his desk, and it looks exactly like his hair. So either Gilderoy is bald, or his golden locks are not that thick and shiny without help. It's a super neat touch that shows Lockhart as a fraud through and through, even without knowing all the facts about him yet. The Time Travel Foreshadowing When Harry returns to the Leaky Cauldron in the Prisoner of Azkaban movie, we are thrilled to see some magic tricks that the residents of the pub do. Amazingly, very few viewers notice that the bartender makes a bottle vanish. Have a look again. After inspecting the bottle, he takes the rag he is cleaning with and throws it over the bottle, and it disappears. And everybody definitely saw the guy stirring his coffee by twirling his finger in the air, making his spoon stir the drink for him. But while the audience is thinking that it would be nice to learn how to do it, they miss the title of the book he's reading. It's Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. This short moment is fun in itself, but also very important as it hints at future events, namely Hermione's travels with the help of the Time Turner. However, the true Potterheads keep on wondering, was Hawking a muggle or a wizard? Did Hermione read the book? And maybe the wizard version explains how to use time turners? Sneak introduction of Nagini As die-hard Harry Potter fans, you've probably re-watched all of the movies dozens of times. So you've definitely noticed how, together with the story, the color palette changes, gradually growing darker and darker. And so are the intros, which become more sinister every single time. But in the Goblet of Fire, something is added to the Warner Brothers logo. We can glimpse a reflection of Nagini on it. And a couple of minutes later, we get a better look at her, slithering up the stairs to her master. But it's not the coolest foreshadowing that we see in this movie yet. The Deathly Hallows 3D Model Incredibly, in Goblet of Fire, we catch a shot of the Deathly Hallows symbol way before we even knew what they are. It's really buried deep, but not entirely impossible to notice. Dumbledore brings Harry to his office to warn him about the dangers he may face. As the headmaster is nervously pacing around, he looks inside a glass cabinet, and there it 
is a quite large 3D model, a triangle, which represents the invisibility cloak, with a line running through the center, representing the Elder Wand, and a circle inside, which stands for the Resurrection Stone. Once again, it's a full three movies before we get introduced to the Deathly Hallows. Also, when Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire movie premiered, the last book hadn't been released yet. So there was simply no way for the audience to notice this detail at the time. Tom Riddle had evil plans all along. The Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince movie has many pivotal moments as we start to dig deep into the history of Voldemort. In the flashback, we get to see Dumbledore visiting young Tom Riddle in his room. And although this scene is intriguing in itself, not everybody noticed two details that are actually very important and hint at future events. Firstly, there are seven rocks lined up on the windowsill. Number seven is altogether crucial for the franchise, and we'll definitely come back to this later. But here we see the direct foreshadowing of Riddle's descent into dark magic and splitting his soul into seven horcruxes. Moreover, in the same scene, right next to the seven stones, we see a picture of a dark cave, surrounded by wild water, crashing the rocks. This is the very place where Voldemort later hides one of his horcruxes, the Magical Seven. In addition to the seven horcruxes, there are lots of sevens in the Harry Potter universe. Besides the seven books in the series, there are seven Weasley kids, seven players on a Quidditch team, seven snakes on the door to the Chamber of Secrets, seven locks on the chest where Barty Crouch Jr. imprisoned the real Mad-Eye Moody, seven decoy Harry Potters during the plot to escape the Death Eaters in Deathly Hallows Part 1, and finally, Harry's Quidditch number is seven. Amazingly, this Quidditch number explicitly indicates that Harry is the seventh Horcrux, even in the Half-Blood Prince movie. This is really mind-bending. Voldemort's robes fade in color. While the intros to the movies become darker each time, the Dark Lord's billowing robes seem to lose their color. This effect spans through all the movies and seems to be tied to his Horcruxes and his immortality. Every time a Horcrux is destroyed, Voldemort loses a piece of his soul and his robes pale slightly. Eventually, he who must not be named fades away after the final duel with Harry. The True Gryffindor Severus Snape proved to be a perfect undercover agent. He managed to deceive the Dark Lord himself, protecting his true allies at the same time. There were a lot of moments in the movies that showed how he covertly supported Dumbledore's plans, but there's one scene we love the most. Just look how elegantly he grants victory to the head of Gryffindor House in their duel. Snape only uses defense charms, deflecting McGonagall's spells, and he does it in such a way that they hit the two Death Eaters behind him. That is truly amazing, although this all happens rather quickly, so the viewers don't notice or don't pay much attention to it. However, it makes perfect sense later, when we finally find out the whole story behind his actions. In this respect, we'd like to draw your attention to yet another hidden detail. In Snape's death scene, there's a Gryffindor scarf hanging in the background, most probably as a reference to his bravery. But Severus wasn't the only one who didn't survive that night. The Visible Loss In case you didn't know, in the Harry Potter movies, the identical Weasley twins Fred and George were always shown in that order on the screen, left to right. They were virtually inseparable, even on their mother's magical clock they shared the same hand. Tragically, Fred was killed during the Battle of Hogwarts, but, as we can see, George didn't have time to get used to his dreadful loss. And when Harry reveals he is alive, George turns excitedly to his brother, who would have been standing next to him if he was still alive. Well, now that you know it, this moment will definitely bring tears to your eyes. History Repeating Professor Slughorn didn't seem to play a prominent role in the climactic Battle of Hogwarts. However, attentive fans noticed that he drinks something that could very well be a vial of liquid luck, right before he, Professor McGonagall, Mrs. Weasley, and the rest cast a defense shield around the castle. This was a great idea from Slughorn. He survived the battle. And, who knows, maybe without his drinking of the potion, the shield would not have lasted as long. But as the barrier is broken and the battle begins, Harry, Ron, and Hermione run through Hogwarts after Snape fighting off all sorts of monsters on their way. This is mind-blowing, but look, first they encounter a troll, and it's a nod to the Sorcerer's Stone, when Harry and Ron saved Hermione from a cave troll in the girls' bathroom. Then the trio encounters giant spiders, which connects to the events of the Chamber of Secrets and the Children of Aragog. After that, they witness how a werewolf savages poor Lavender Brown, which reminds us both of the Prisoner of Azkaban and of the death of Cedric in the Goblet of Fire. And right before Harry, Ron, and Hermione finally reach the Half-Blood Prince himself, they're attacked by Dementors. So in fact, the trio of friends relived all their previous battles in one. The perfect roundup. As a final point of our journey through the hidden details of the Harry Potter movies, let's recall another moment that repeated itself in the first and the last films. 
The diehard fans of the franchise definitely remember that in The Sorcerer's Stone, Harry got a chocolate frog during his first trip on the Hogwarts Express, and it behaved the way these magical sweets usually do. The frog leapt out of the box to the train window and escaped through it. In The Deathly Hallows Part 2, that moment takes place once again. When the kids get on the train, there's a chocolate frog hopping around. What a sweet nod to the beginning, right? But it also perfectly completes the story, as the children of Ron and Hermione, Harry and Ginny, are looking forward to their first year at Hogwarts, full of exciting adventures, just like their parents once did. Which of these hidden gems surprised you the most? Share with us in the comments, and thank you for staying with Awesome Movies! Thank you.